In this video, we're looking at a, a sheltered part of the meteorite that was protected because of the, the recess. Uh, it, it, it's a crevice, approximately one centimeter deep. It runs along the meteorite around six to eight centimeters in length. And within the crevice, we can see many, many, many tiny meteorites that are embedded micrometeorites. Now, it's interesting, the majority of these appear to be rounded in shape, spherical in shape. There are some larger ones that have adhered, have struck and adhered. But there's an, an abundance of tiny ones that range in size from from 1 to 20 microns. The scale that you see is millimeter showing on a scale and I've enlarged it as much as I'm able to to show the incredible fineness of these micrometeorites. They are stacked on top of each other, welded into place, and in places where I can measure, it appears that the depth is anywhere from five to eight millimeters deep and so they are stacked on top of each other for that depth. Now the ones, the micrometeorites that have landed in a more open area like up in here, this area is less protected and will eventually, these will, these will, would have been, would have been struck by larger objects and flattened out and become simply added mass to this, to this area. But in the protected area of the crevasse, apart from the occasional micrometeorite, larger micrometeorite that strikes and stays, or just outside of the crevasse where, where larger than one millimeter mic micrometeorites are adhered, within the crevasse itself, they are very much protected. And at the most extreme magnification, they are spherical, but welded in place. It's impossible for, for acid etching or erosion to erode in a way that causes tiny spheres, perfectly formed spheres to be, to be on the surface. It just doesn't happen that way. This is, these obviously hit at such a velocity that they melted and melted the surface where they struck and they welded in place. 
Now, mixed in with these sparkles that are in fact micrometeorites, you can see a lot of this brown staining or brown substance. And some of this is, is iron oxide, rust. And some of this is actually high desert soil. This meteorite struck in the high desert, central Oregon, in an area where the soil is very much this color, sort of a reddish brown color, very dry. Winter, they get a couple inches of snow. Summer, they get very little rain. So year round, lots of sunlight, but very little moisture. And so there might have been, had it been, had this meteorite fallen in a, a wetter area, more humid area, uh, this, the rust might have been much more developed than it is. But as it stands now, some of this is actually rust, iron rust, and some of it is high desert soil. How can we tell the difference? Well, under higher magnification than this, the soil itself flakes away easily, revealing a shiny surface and shiny micrometeorites underneath. In the areas that are rusted, if I, if I do manage to scrape away some of the, some of the iron oxide, what I see underneath is micrometeorites that are not shiny. Iron has a darker look to it. It tends to, here's an example here, it tends to show up with a fusion crust. Tends to just be more gray to begin with, where the titanium has a more silver look. So interesting, mixed in with these micrometeorites, there's a mixture of iron meteorites that have specks of rust and fusion crust showing, but there's also micrometeorites that are very much non-rusted, silvery looking, not affected by ablation, have no fusion crust, and my guess is that, that they, they are probably titanium meteorites. Now, they, could they be something else, a, a different element that is not susceptible to the, to the atmospheric ablation and the melting? Yes. I'm not sure what that could be. The fact that we have an, a titanium meteorite, obviously this would have come from from a supernova explosion someplace in our in our galaxy. And it would make sense that if there's a one kilo size chunk, there's also small pieces. And so this doesn't surprise me that there are titanium micrometeorites mixed in with iron ones on this object.